Hey everyone, I'm Naomi Meredith, and today I'm going to be showing you how to assign and create work for students to share in Google Classroom. In Google Classroom, there are different types of work that you can give to kids. There are assignments, which will probably be the most popular one you use. You can create quiz assignments, questions students can respond to. You can create materials, so put together all of those awesome resources in one place that are just there for them. Reuse posts, and you can also create topics to organize your work. Here I am in the teacher view of Google Classroom. If you haven't watched my other video tutorial, I talk about what all these categories mean, so make sure you check that out if you are a little bit confused of what's going on here. I'm going to click on classwork, and then you notice I have these big things right here, these subjects, those are topics. I've seen teachers use topics in different ways. You can go this route with subjects. You can also, if you have different co-teachers in your class, you can label each of the cat or the topics with the teacher's names that are um, using the same Google Classroom. Or if you're doing remote learning or summer school or just a short period of time, you can label the topics with weeks. So however you wanna keep this organized, kids will see topics in their classwork as well. So that's just up to you and a preference. If you don't add topics, all of your work will just be a long stream like this, which is okay, but it's just nice to keep it organized and you can also move work into different topics as well. So to create anything, including topics and assignments, we're gonna click this create button. And those are all of those different types of um, categories that I just shared with you. We'll go over each one. To create a topic, to create this categories, this is a great place to start you're going to hit topic and we're going to name it. I need a STEM topic in this class because I'm a STEM teacher. And let's click add. And you can see I don't have anything posted under here in this STEM one. Now I did create a STEM activity before. I can move that work in there. If I click the three dots to the side, I can edit. And over here, I can change the topic and then save it. And we'll go back to a, something like this. We'll create a fresh one. So now you can see I have an assignment under the STEM topic. All right, so that was something already created. Let's create something new. So let's click Create Assignment. And then we're going to name this um, what I want the students to see, Cardboard Wall Maze. And then I'm going to add in some instructions I want them to read. I pre-typed those for you. And then I can add lots of different file types. I can add straight from my Google Drive. I can add a link from an e-website. I can upload a file if I have a Google, or I'm, I'm sorry, a Microsoft document, a PDF on my desktop, or I can even add straight from YouTube. So um, just be careful with YouTube, depending on what your school blocks and doesn't block or what kids have at home, um, you may or may not be able to use this option. So I know I wanna add a document for students to type on, and I want Google Classroom to actually make a copy for every single kid. I want them to have a copy of this engineering notebook of this marble maze that I've created. Right now it defaults to students can view the file. So this is just saying that when the students click on this, they can only see, see it. They can't type on it. And that's just up to you. Do you want them to type on it? Do you not? I do want them to type on this. Google Classroom will automatically, if I choose this, make a copy for them, which is very, very helpful. It's just like a photocopier. I have to click this option. If you don't click it and you wanted a copy, you're gonna have to delete and start over unless they've changed that since this video. Um, but you, if you want a copy, you need to click copy. Edit means that all the kids have access to edit this document. Again, depends on what you want them to do. I don't want them to edit this one. I want them to each have their own. So let's click make a copy. I can actually add more than one thing in an assignment, which is awesome. I also have a video link I want to share with them. I can add it straight from YouTube, but let's just give them the link for now. It is a YouTube video, but it's my cardboard wall maze tutorial. I'm going to add link here and it will stack it for them. I also have a photo. I have an example of a wall maze I would like to give them. So I'm going to hit tab, add again. And this photo is also in my Google Drive, but again, you could upload a photo you have. And here's the photo example. 
And they don't really need a copy of this photo. There's nothing for them to do. So they can all have access to the same photo and view it. That's okay with me. This is all that I want the kids have access to for this project. I can always go back and add things, but I can't add anything where it makes a copy. So I can add more links. I can add more view only files if I would like, and that update will automatically push through the students. Over here on this side, there are lots of other options also. If I teach more than one class that's the same, mine's grayed out because I don't have any others created, but if I teach multiples of a class, I can assign it to multiples of that class right then. I can also assign to specific students. This is great for differentiation, or even, even if a student is absent, you know will be absent for a week, you can just take them off the list. You also can assign points to this. It doesn't have to be 100%. It can be whatever a point value you want. Or if you're not taking an actual grade, you can hit ungraded. You can put a due date if you would like as well. In the last video, I talked about the due dates will pop up in the kids' Google Calendar. It'll pop up in yours as well. But you can set a due date for this assignment. You can also add in a specific time it's due as well. Now, right now it's saying, remember our topics from before, it's saying this isn't underneath a topic. I have to add it underneath a topic if I want. This is a STEM activity. And I can also get even deeper in the grading. I can create a rubric or reuse a rubric or create a rubric in Google Sheets, which we won't go into too much, but there's options to create rubrics there, which is um, very helpful if you are doing project-based learning or big writing tasks. If I'm ready to assign it right this second, I can do that and hit assign. Or if this is an assignment in a week, I can wait and Google Classroom can do the work for me. If I hit schedule, I can schedule this out to post for me at whatever date and time I want it and then I can hit schedule. Once I hit schedule, you can see it's a little bit grayed out. This one has been assigned and posted already. This is a little grayed out because it's not in the stream for the kids yet, and it's scheduled for that date and time. If I mess up, like, oh, wait, you can go back and edit, and you can change the time and all of that. And then I just hit schedule again, and again, it will be scheduled when I want it. So that's an assignment. A quiz assignment will give them more of a grade and it's cool because you can create a Google form right away. So you have all those options here that I showed you before and same with the side, but this will create a quiz Google form that can be graded. This is great for little quizzes and quick things that the kids can do in one setting. And they, this will walk you through how to create a Google form and then you can add it straight in there. Um, and then you probably wouldn't send it, but then once you're done, once you've edited it, it will be in here. So that's a really great option for quick little math quizzes, reading quizzes, something they can do in one setting. You also have in this create a question. Questions are something you can ask the whole class and students can respond to one another. Again, you can add anything. So if you had a question with like a photo, you could add something like, they will say a question to the kids too. Um, what do you think is catching the ball? at the end of the maze. And the kids can respond. Um, they have this image and then the question. They, maybe I just want them to respond a short answer, which is typed, or I give a multiple choice, just like a quick little poll um, without a whole big Google form. So that's pretty neat. And then I can have students reply to each other. I could have students just write their response. Um, or if I want them to go back and change what they said, I can check that off too. Again, there's the points and due dates if I want to do that. And I can schedule out um, questions, um, but once I am finished with that. I also have under this create materials. Materials are where, this is where you would provide a bunch of resources for kids to access. This isn't where you would make copies for kids. So materials would be, maybe you have a whole section of ocean animals and then you add different 
PDFs, you add different links, podcasts, where kids can have like a little tiny resource library that they can reference. Um, you can create, have kit, um, create some things within here, some other Google tools, like maybe if I wanted to create a Google Doc in here, um, and if I need to create some material right away, it just gives you that option that you can put in for the kids. But again, this is not something that kids would make a copy of. These would be view only. So if you're like, oh, I need to type something up really quick for this resource library, I have a list of vocabulary words, you can create that within Google Classroom since it links to your Google Drive. So you can do that right away here, or you can add it if you've already pre-created it. So that's why it's saying create. And then again, you can put it under that topic and differentiate. And then we also have a reuse a post option. So if there was something in this class that I really liked from before, I can reuse that. I can create a copy of all those new, uh, new copies of those attachments. I can reuse it. So this is great if you're, and you can edit it too. If there's just processes that you use over and over again, you don't have to create it from scratch every time. So that's super awesome. And you can see things you've created in past classes that you really liked. As a student, let me show you that really quick. Um, they have classwork right here. And they would go in, in their stream and we might want to refresh and see all those new things. But they would see all those topics that you created if you chose to create topics. And then they would click on the assignment. And then they would view the assignment. Pretty similar to the teacher view. If you have done anything where it makes a copy, it will be over here and they need to click on that. Any resources or view only documents will be on the left. They can add work. So if there's some um, a photo or video they took of their final project, they can add that here. They can create new um, documents and everything just like you to add to their work. And then they can click the turn in button. As a teacher, you can see their work regardless if they turn it in or not. So that's just a teacher preference. And then the kids can write comments to you as a teacher to help have some clarifying questions. Once the kids have turned in anything or not, so let's say this kid's turned it in. Um, when they can click on their work. But once they have turned their work in, they can't do any more editing. So they need to make sure that they are 100% done with their work before they hit turn in. As a teacher, you could see, like I said, you could see their work regardless. I'm going to click on classwork. And then I have the cardboard airplane. And I'm going to click on view assignment. And I have a list of all of my students over here. I can see this student turn it in. I can even click into their work and see what they have done. I can add them some comments over here and look through what they have done in this assignment. This kid hasn't turned it in, but I can see it anyway. So like I said, you could see it either way as a teacher if it's turned in or not. And then you can also, if I had grades, I could put grades here, but I think this assignment, I didn't put grades. But pretty awesome with that. With questions, it might be a little bit different. Um, questions will be posted um, also and all of those other things. Question, questions will be posted on the stream that kids can answer too. So that's where they'll answer questions. And just like everything else, it'll be posted in the stream where they can access that as well. So I hope that helps with your assigning work and viewing that student work in Google Classroom and seeing the student side as well and how it's very similar to that teacher view, but it's also helpful to know what they are seeing so you can help them along the way. Thanks for watching and I hope I will see all of you soon.